She's an animal. Sometimes she's a lion, a bear, a monkey. She can do so many things. Ew, is this podcast going somewhere gross? No, I'm talking about the superhero vixen. That's what we're going to talk about today because your geek history lesson is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your mind university because you have stumbled on the podcast where we take one character's construct or animal shapeshifter from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them. That's right. Today we are talking about the DC comic superhero Vixen uh, because uh, she had an animated series on the CW Seed mm-hmm. and she's going to appear. Uh, now she's on Arrow. Yeah. She's on Arrow. Awesomely on Arrow. She's live action on Arrow. Uh, uh, this podcast was suggested by no one. <laughs> we decided to do it. We did. Uh, and we want to just tell all our fans out there that if you want to suggest the future podcast and subject, you can go to our social media, which is where, Ashley? Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson and GeekHistoryLesson.com. That's right. Let's jump right into the vixen-y vixen of Arrow in this first section of our podcast, The Ten Cent Origin. The Ten Cent Origin is the part of the show where we give you all the basic cliff notes, power sets, aliases that you need to know in case you go to a vixen-themed cocktail party. Ooh, you think there are vixen... Oh, let's not go, go there. There probably are vixen-themed cocktail parties. We can only hope. All right. Uh, Vixen, of course, is a character published by DC Comics. She had her first appearance in Cancelled Comic Calvacade. Say that four times. Wow. Cancelled Comic Calvacade, number two, in September of 1978. But her origin story appeared in her first general release, happened in Action Comics number 521 in July of 1981. She was created by Jerry Conway as the writer and Bob Oxner. O K S N E R. I'm gonna. That's a heck of a last yep, name. As the uh, artist, her alter ego is Mari, and I'm gonna mispronounce this middle name. It's J I W E. I'm gonna say Jiwi. The Jui. Jui. <laughs> Mari Jui McKay. <laughs> That's right. Uh, her team affiliations have been Justice League, Suicide Squad, Checkmate, and the Ultramarine Corps. Core, I'm sorry. Interesting, Justice League and Suicide Squad. We'll get there, we'll get there. And her abilities are that she mimics the abilities of any animal that has ever lived on Earth, and plus she has a healing factor. So I can't wait for her to turn into a dinosaur. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. Uh, let's go into the next section of our podcast called The Meet Cute. The Meet Cute is the part of the podcast where we took a term for romantic comedy writing, and we tell you the first time we met this character and how cute it was. Ashley, where did you first meet Vixen. Good God. Mari Jui. Have McCabe. I no idea where I ever first met Vixen. I think you would remember it. Um, I I'm, just, I'm just saying I that. I don't really, though. Okay. Um, it was probably in a Justice League story. Like, I feel like a lot of the kind of secondary, for lack of a better phrase, not to diminish, the secondary DC characters you usually read about in a big event, you know? Well, they just appear and you're kind of like, who's that person? And then someone's like, oh, this is Vixen. Or like, if it's the Avengers, they're like, oh, this is whoever. Yeah. Um, so that's what I feel like. I feel like I probably met her in a big Justice League crossover. And, and, and of, didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But the first time I ever remember, of course, being super aware of her was when they announced the Vixen TV series. The CWC. Yes, the cartoon. The animated series. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Wow, very recent. Yeah. Interesting. How about you? Uh, I first encountered Vixen in the Justice League of America volume that was written by Brad Meltzer. Now, this was right after uh, Infinite Crisis. They'd taken the one-year gap. The Justice League had not been brought back together, and this was Brad Meltzer forming the Justice League back together. And Vixen, we'll talk about this run, Vixen joins the team, and her powers and her animal powers are a big plot line of the series. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can tell Brad Meltzer loved him some Vixen. Uh, Oh, yeah? (laughs) So, I... I think I'd seen her in events before then, but that was the first time like I ever understood like who the hell she was. And also, um, the Just League Unlimited cartoon. She's a big part of the Just League Unlimited oh, cartoon. That's true. Because she dates Jon Stewart during that time. Oh, that's probably where I yeah. actually first met her. That's probably where you first <laughs> met her. Uh, uh, she's, she's very prominent. She in is. In the Just League Unlimited cartoon. Yes. So I would say those two things um, gave me an appreciation for her. Cool. All right, let's jump into history 101. The main meat of the lesson. All right. Now, real quick, let me mention this. Okay. Or let's caveat this. Bing! Bing! Uh, (laughs) Vixen doesn't have a lot of stories where she's the lead. Okay. She doesn't have a lot of stories where she gets to be a real character. She's very similar to Rip Hunter, and she usually, in most stories, doesn't get to do much beyond a cliche or a plot. She's a a, a piece of plot. Like, she's there to further the plot along. Yeah. Uh, And so just know that. 
Can I can I say that I think that is very interesting because her power set is not super different from Garfield Logan uh, Beast Boy's power set. It's very true. Um, and, but he is a much more I would say prominent and well flushed out character by comparison. Sure. So I, just, I think you know I would say it's also interesting that I think they both have a very unique power set. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say the difference of Beast Boy, but deep, Beast Boy is a straight up sheep sh- shapeshifter, right? He's a sheep shifter, yes. He's a sheep shifter. <laughs> he is, he, yes, he is. He ships with the sheeps. Yes, but whereas she's, I know, I know you're going to talk more about it, but she's more like the energy and the essence of we the will, character. We will explain her powers exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, now that we know that, let's jump into some real history from our world, not the geek history. Okay. Because you need to do that, you need to do this to understand this. Now, Vixen was intended to be the first African-American female DC superhero to star in her own solo series. Well, that's sufficiently badass. Now, (laughs) I read this online that she was intended... Uh. And I did not understand what they were, what it meant, what they were talking about. So I emailed uh, a resident comic book expert, uh, Matthew Peterson, co-host of the Major Spoilers podcast and the Dueling Review podcast. And I asked him about this, and this is what he told me. He said that he thinks the first African female DC hero was probably Nuba, a.k.a. Black Wonder Woman, who first appeared in 1973. Now, she, he says that she was Wonder Woman's sister. Did he write Nuba? I think it's Nubia. I I don't know. Okay. I'm reading you exactly what he emailed me. Thank you. Uh, And the dicey origin was that she was made from dark clay while Diana was made from white clay. So we're kind of going down a weird, okay. Um, But in all actuality, the first African-American female superhero heroine was actually Bumblebee, (gasps) who first appeared in 1977. Now- Let's go back to this. This this is this is some real world history to me and some politics of a comic book company that are very interesting. And I'll tell you what, when I was researching this lesson, I had no idea about this event. You're going to learn something interesting about DC Comics. Uh, sidebar, I'm not throwing you under is the it bus. Nubia? I'm, it is Nubia. I'm throwing the typo in the email under the bus. She uh, is called Nubia if anyone wants to go. Well, and I, I, her. I, like a Nubian goddess. Well, let's thank Matthew Peterson for his email, but, Absolutely. Then, but then let's chide him for his spelling. I'm chiding you. <laughs> <laughs> in a very playful way. Please, yes. please don't tweet at him being like, Matthew, come on. Tweeted him and say thank you. Yeah, No, it was Nubia. I, 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 I literally copied and pasted it. All right. Okay. Um, uh, so, back to the point. So, Nubia mm-hmm. was the first African. Mm-hmm. Bumblebee was the first African American okay. superheroine who starred in their, or, you know, or, so, so Nuba is the first African superheroine to kind of appear. Bumblebee is the first to star. Vixen was supposed to be okay. the first one to star. Now, you're probably like, well, what happened? Why wasn't Vixen? She was designed to be this. Okay, hang on. Let me take it back. What happened? What's Vixen? She was designed to be in this. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Well, the first issue of her series was canceled in an event called the DC Implosion of 1978. Now, the DC Implosion was not an event that DC was like, it's the implosion. Oh, okay. It's it's this term that like historians, I guess comic book historians Mm -hmm. have given to it since then. Uh, Now, the DC Implosion happened in 1978. There were two or three issues of Vixen that were in the can. Oh. And the DC Implosion happened... And made all these issues never to be released. And all of these stories were picked up in the canceled comic Calvacade, which might sound familiar if you've been listening uh-huh. to this podcast less than 10 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, but now, let me explain to you what the DC implosion is. Uh, please, because I have no idea. Now, this this name is a sardonic reference okay. to the DC explosion, which was... A marketing campaign that it was being run by DC at the time. So right. DC was calling their titles the DC Explosion. Yeah. Now DC at the time had been publishing more titles and they increased the number of story pages in all of their titles, which of course increased the cover prices. And DC premiered 57 new titles from 1975 to 1978. So, so in three wow. years they premiered 57 titles. <laughs> DC right now doesn't even publish 57 titles. No, for real, though. <laughs> That's okay. Can you imagine? It's crazy, right? I, I'll, although I, I will say I do remember a day back in the day when Marvel published 100 comic books every month. You mean the 90s? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, because I remember seeing that subscription seat, uh, you yeah. know, where it's like, oh, you can subscribe, you can cut this out, and you can mail it in. And I was always like, I'm not going to cut that out. I'm not going to cut out my comic book. By the way, fun fact, when they had those subscription forms, I would never cut it out. I would take it to a library, copy the Photo page, copy it? and then fill that out. You nerd. Yeah. I was like, I'm not cutting out my comic book. Oh, you nerd. I love it. What if I ever want to read this again? Then that panel of Spider-Man's missing. Well, it's not a great panel <laughs> anyway. It'll be fine. <laughs> you leave Ben Riley alone. All right. Ba- back to the DC implosion. All right. Yeah. 
So, since the early 1970s, DC had been in, had, had it seen its dominance of the market overtaken by Marvel Comics. Okay. Partly because Marvel had significantly increased the number of titles it published, and in large part, the DC explosion was meant to overtake Marvel in the market. Mm. However, DC instead experienced poor sales in the winter of 1977. Now, this had been attributed now to the North American blizzards in 1977 and 1978, which disrupted distribution and curtailed consumer purchases. So people didn't go out to the comic book, and the comic books didn't make it to the comic store half the time. Oh, interesting. So DC had really bad sales yeah. in 1977. And in June of 22nd of 1978, DC Comics announced staff layoffs and canceled 40% of its line, which led to 20 series being canceled immediately. In mid-run, immediately. That's like, holy expletive, Batman. With, with, with like another 30 being canceled over the next couple months. Can you imagine how many issues in the can there were? Yeah. Holy jeez. Like nuts. And can you imagine the time reading a DC comic book and it just stops? And then it's done. And it never gets its ending. Yeah, you get like that cliffhanger where it's like, what will Robin do next? And you're like, nothing. <laughs> I will never find out what Robin does next. Oh, Jesus. That's crazy. Uh, so most of the unpublished work saw print in this book that they started releasing called the Cancelled Comic Calvacade. Cool. It was a summer 1978 two-issue Ashcan series, which was published in a limited quantity solely to establish the copyrights of these characters and stories. A smart, smart move. And Vixen's origin story was one of these unpublished works. Okay. Now, soon she debuted in Action Comics. Yay! And let's go to her fictional history. Let's wow. go into the DC Universe fictional characters. That sidebar, that was fascinating. Yeah. That was like, wow. <laughs> I had never heard of the DC implosion. Ever. I didn't either. Yeah. All right, here we go. Now, let's go to ancient Africa, one of my favorite places to visit. Of course. Yep. Uh, <laughs> now, there was a legend in ancient Africa that okay. the warrior Tantu, who is called Anansi the Spider, who we've, we've talked about Anansi a couple times before, mm -hmm. uh, asked Anansi the Spider to create a totem that would give the wearer of all the powers of the animal kingdom and they would use this power to protect the innocent now tantu used the totem to become the first legendary hero of africa so this warrior tantu got this totem from anansi and was like i'm the hero i would i would hazard that they were probably the first hero of ever of history of dc yes. <laughs> yeah. now the totem was later passed down to tantu's descendants until it reached the mccabe's Okay. Now, growing up in a small African village, Mari Jui McCabe. The suddenly Scottish McCabe. Yep, <laughs> uh, uh, heard the legend of the Tantu totem from her parents. She, at the time, was the daughter of Reverend Richard Jui, the village priest, <laughs> who was her sole caretaker, as poachers, led by a man called Kawisi, killed her mother years ago. Wow. Now, Reverend Jui himself was killed by his half brother, who, who was actually Mari's uncle, General. Um, Maksai. We're doing our best on the pronunciations. Yes, I, I, I really apologize. Uh, Maka, I have it Makasai. I'm going to say Maks, Makasai. Let's just go with that. Cool. Now, this general, Mari's uncle, wanted the Tantu totem, which actually was in Reverend Jui's position. This uh, sounds an awful lot like the Lion King, and I'm not just saying this because they're both set in Africa. Well, now we know where the Lion King came, with, came <laughs> up with it. They read Vixen. <laughs> they read Vixen. Um, so, Reverend Jui was killed mm -hmm. by the general. So, Mari orphan fled to America. Okay. And she set up an identity for herself as Mari McCabe and used her beauty to become a well-known fashion model in New York City, just like Zoolander. Just, yeah, just like that. Exactly like just Zoolander. Just like Starfire as well, yeah. uh, who who came up around the same time, yeah. so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, a lot of models in the 70s. Mary Jane Watson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She used her newfound wealth to travel the world, and on a trip back to Africa, she came across her uncle, the general, and stole back the Tantu totem, using its power to become... Vixen. I hope she called him H Uncle the General. Uncle. Hello, Uncle the General. Hello, Uncle the General. I need your powers. <laughs> She's also a robot. Is that you, <laughs> <laughs> Um Now, uh, let's talk about her powers real quick and what the Tantu Totem does. Please. Now, Vixen has the ability to make direct contact with the Earth's morphogenetic field. Which, Can you say that word again for me? Morphogenetic. <laughs> That's a great word. Um, which is sometimes known in DC Comics as the red. Oh, now, I see. Now, the contact, this red is sort of the animal power, the animal dimension. It's something that uh, is brought up in the new Swamp Thing run an awful lot. Uh, Ant-Man run, actually, because Ant-Man's connected to the red and Swamp Thing's connected, connected to, to the, the green. green. That's right. Yes, they've introduced this thing about the colors. There's the gray. There's the rot. Uh, yeah. There's a whole bunch of them. They've kind of green lanterned all the plants. 
the Earth stuff. Well, I'll keep it on brand. Why not? Sure. There you go. Now, this contact with the red allows the user to draw upon the abilities of any animal that has ever lived on the planet. So your T-Rex fantasies are oh, true. Oh, for real? Yes. Oh, that's the best. By she can be her own Jurassic World. She can. Ooh. By focus, simply focusing on a specific animal, she can draw its talent directly from the morphogenetic field and mimic its abilities, thus giving her a variety of superhuman powers. Now, it was originally thought that the totem gave her her powers, but it was later revealed that her abilities are inherited from her family. And the totem is just like a representation. And the totem just prevents you from being overwhelmed by the morphogenic field. Oh, that's cool. That it would kill you and burn you out. So they did midichlorians, but they did it with in a more interesting way. Now, that's a retcon, of course. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, now, another thing about her powers is her powers even allow her to twist some animal abilities. Like, for example, when she used the bioluminescence of a marine hatchet fish mm-hmm. and an angler fish to produce light from her hand and create a laser-like beam from her head. Oh, okay. okay. So she can combine animal powers. Yeah, and she can extrapolate because, like, the anglerfish is the fish with the yep. scary little light bulb. Yep. But she can use that as a laser. She yep. can use it uh, offensively as exactly. opposed to just, just oh, offensively. That's so interesting. Yep. All right, so now let's go back to her solo superhero career now that you know how her powers work. What she do. So Vixen, she's a solo superhero in America. Sexy model adventurer. Yep. And what do you think she does? Uh, she's just, be- just th- beats up people? Well, that's what you think, but she doesn't do very much. Okay. Because <laughs> Vixen only made two appearances as a solo crime fighter. Aw, Vixen. Once fighting poachers in India, and then against the techno psycho criminal Admiral Cerebus. Admiral Cerebus. Admiral Cerebus. You know, that was a guy that he loved uh, Greek mythology, but then he was like, no, but I need a title like Captain. No, I want to outrank captains. Admirals. A dog with three heads <laughs> is just not cool enough for this guy. In fact, Mari was a very reluctant and I would say lazy superhero until the Justice League of America, which was reorganized by Aquaman at the time, um, uh, sought her out. Oh, okay. And she applied for full-time league membership and was accepted. And during her time with the Aquaman Justice League of America, the totem was taken away from her by her uncle, General Moxai. Jerk. Uh, who, who sought its powers. And the, but the totem, he found, wouldn't work for him. Because it would only grant its full power to those who would use it to protect the innocent. And it actually caused her... Oh, so it's judgy. Yeah, yeah. It's very, <laughs> it's very harsh. So it actually caused him to be transformed into a giant raging beast. And Vixen fought it. And uh, her uncle, the general, was killed in battle. Oh, that's not, not that Not really bad. that bad. I want to imagine that he actually turns into like Hank McCoy beast. Huh. <laughs> uh, when the same Justice League uh, faced the killer android Amazo, Ashley, do you know who Amazo is? Um, Amazo is basically a giant robot man with pointy ears who's designed to take down someone of superhero, he Superman's. Can, he um, can duplicate superhuman abilities. Yes. Yes. Um, in, and he, he features in the opening sequence of Batman Under the Red Hood movie. Yes, he does. He's fighting Amazo. And he has stripy pants. Yeah, he yep. kind of looks like um, he kind of like the Submariner in that, but on mm-hmm. roids. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Vixen and several of her teammates were beaten into unconsciousness and then left bound and gagged in a walled off pit. Now, Vixen saved the lives of herself and her fellow leaguers by using her powers to shatter her bonds and dig to freedom. I want to imagine what animal is that? Like a mole? Like tick, tick, the badger? Tick, tick, the badger? The, ba- the, the, the badger, Wolverine? Badger powers? <laughs> she's got little stripes in her hair. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's spitting everywhere, <laughs> growing whiskers. They're like, man, I thought I thought Mari was hot, but not now. Oh, yeah, mm. ooh, that posture though. She just ate a mouse. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, when this league disbanded, uh, it is actually disbanded by the Martian Manhunter. Uh, he kind of John sh- Jones. He, John Jones just kind of showed up and was like, "Your Justice League's lame. Get out of here." Bye. Uh, Vixen returned to modeling. Well, it's a good gig. Mm-hmm. But a Caribbean photo session turned violent when Mari's colleagues were killed by drug smugglers. Wow. Just They just came out of nowhere and killed them. In the Caribbean, huh? Yep. Not in like uh, El Salvador or something? No. Nope. Well, Mari was so appalled that she turned to the government for help. And the government... Wrong move. ...turned the matter over to the Suicide Squad. Uh, Ashley... Who is the Suicide Squad? Suicide Squad is Task Force X, which is really hard to say. They are uh, usually always run by Amanda Waller. 
Led by men? Uh, well, uh, most of the mostly. time. There's a couple versions where they aren't. Uh, they tend to be the bad guys with little bombs inside their heads sent to do the jobs that are too dangerous or too suicidal for anyone else to yes, take over. Yes, they're, they're, they're criminals from a prison that the government forces to do their dirty work. Yep. Uh, coming out in a movie soon. Yep. Fun times for the whole family. Yep. Now, she went undercover, Mari, mm-hmm. with the squad to capture the drug kingpin Cujo, who had in, uh, created the whole incident that killed her. Oh, her. okay. Um who actually had been revealed, you know, during footage. They found it during footage from the photo. They looked at the photos from the camera. Oh, and you could see him? Oh, and they were like, could... oh, it's Cujo. What a crappy yep. criminal. Or is his men, anyways. Are his, um, his men. Yep. Wearing dog masks. Now, along with Captain Boomerang and Black Orchid, uh, don't worry about them, Okay. Uh, from the Suicide Squad, she destroyed the operation, but not before she lost control and ki- killed the Kingpin Cujo <gasps> because of her anger. Dun, dun, dun. Done. Revolted by what she had become and how her anger had taken control of her, she agreed to work with the squad until her animal instincts could be curbed. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> now, she worked with the squad for some time, uh, again, seeing teammates on the squad be killed, mm-hmm. friends be killed. And actually, when the squad disbanded, the government disbanded the squad for a year, she actually went back to modeling. And she even launched a successful line of clothing. So it's good to be a person like Mari and just be like, well, if I'm not doing this, I can just go be a model. Yeah. I, I, what a uh, tough life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know? but she's very business savvy and you have to appreciate that. She's hustling. Mm-hmm. She's got to pay the rent. Now, during her time with the squad, she also had a failed romance. Oh. And that was with Ben Turner. Do you know who Ben Turner is? I don't know who He's a very ben famous Turner. member of the Suicide Squad. Is he? He's the Bronze Tiger. Ah, uh, now the bronze. That's tig- on brand casting, yep. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now the bronze tiger, basically a guy dressed up with tiger stripes, and he's a good fighter. There you go. And he's got like yeah. Yep. Uh, he's now, also an arrow. <laughs> now the bronze tiger, he made Vixen uh, an offer to come back to the squad, and Vixen declined it. But Vixen at the time was like, hmm, that Ben's kind of conflicted and tortured inside. I might be able to fix it. Oh my God, they did that? Yes, they did. And so This is how women act, right? Yep. So Vixen agreed to return and serve with the squad through the end of its current this 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 uh, squad's incarnation's mm-hmm. existence. Uh, she ultimately gave up on her future with the Bronze Tiger, sensing that he would never admit to needing help. You know, I think um, given that she's going to be on Arrow, which is a CW show that, uh, as I mentioned, has featured Bronze Tiger before, it would be interesting if those characters would have any interaction in her appearances. It would be interesting. I I, I have to doubt that that will happen since um, there's a big movie coming out. And I kind of have the feeling that the Arrow producers... Um, Do you think the Bronze Tiger is going to be in the movie? Well, he's a no, but I have a feeling that there is a big oh embargo w- embargo on the Suicide Squad characters. I, I do I do not have confirmation either way. That is my guess. Oh, we also haven't seen the Bronze Tiger since I think season two on that show. So. I think the beginning of season two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I could be wrong. On that. He needs work though. It'll be okay. Yeah, Michael J. White. He <laughs> yeah. played Spawn in a movie. Yeah, he did. Uh, so after that, Mari began to do some undercover work. Undercover model yep. work. <laughs> she was drafted for at least one mission for Checkmate, which at the time was not the weird spy organization that it's become now. It was actually originally a sister team to the Suicide Squad. Also run by Amanda Waller. Yes. Uh, now, Vixen still had trouble controlling her animal side while using the totem. Uh, as witness when she worked alongside the Flash to stop Gorilla Grodd and she went a little crazy. Um, she came to Wonder Woman's aid during a battle with, with Cersei and went a little crazy. And she also helped her <laughs> former JLA comrades protect Lex Luthor and she went a little crazy. Um, she also I'm sensing I'm sensing a pattern yep. here. She also served on one mission with Justice League Task Force, Rah. which was in a 90s extreme spinoff. Not as extreme as Extreme Justice, which was a title that DC published. Awesome. Um, but it was a spinoff of Justice League Europe. And the Justice League Task Force is a team that was called to action by Hannibal Martin, who is a representative of the UN. And he asked that the Martian Manhunter select a strike team of fellow Justice League members and to lead them on very special secret missions. Hmm. Yep. That sounds pretty secret. Yep. She soon signed on to work sometimes with Oracle's Bird as a Prey. That's true. And she went undercover to investigate a strange superhero cult where the leader was able to mind control her. Mm. This is going to be a recurring theme. Uh, okay. The Huntress tried to help her, but was nearly killed by Vixen. But Vixen, because Vixen went crazy, because she lost control of her senses, and she used the stubbornness of a mule... To hold back the mind control of the cult leader. Really? Yep. And then she and Huntress really? rescued the other brainwashed heroes. Okay. And then 
as I said, not many vi- uh, Vixen storylines. We have more to come. Mm-hmm. We get to a storyline called Infinite Crisis. Now, Ashley, we've talked about this several times in this podcast. Some uh, some people on social media ha- ha- like when we hit the same DC events or Marvel events. We we're at a hundred and two episodes now. Can you explain? Infinite Crisis. Infinite Crisis is the one where Superboy gets really mad. Which Superboy? Superboy Prime. Thank you. Gets really mad and he punches a hole in the universe and then gets stuck in a wall. He doesn't get stuck in a wall. Well, they put him in a wall. Sort of. (laughs) And he restarts. The stuff changes after he punches the universe. (laughs) We need to do an Infinite Crisis lesson. I think we might. I don't want to do. No, we need to do one on Zero Hour. (laughs) (laughs) We don't know that one either. (laughs) That's the one where he he punches a wall in reality, and basically they try to remake the the multiverse. Uh, Yes. Yes, and then our heroes fight them. So yes. And they stick him in a wall. Yes. Yes. So, and if that Superboy reality punch wasn't too much for you. Then, listeners, I have to ask you this. Why don't you head on over to patreon.com slash Jawin? That's J-A-W-I-I-N. And we promise that we won't punch you. And that's the way we show our thanks for you going to patreon.com. For just $3 of support, one, we're not going to punch you anytime we see you. But you also get Geek History Lesson episodes early. Wow. And for $5 a month, we only ask for monthly donations. We're not a weekly or episodic podcast. Like, give us all the money. Uh, for $5 a month. You guys get an exclusive Patreon podcast called Geek History Lesson Extra, where we go off the cuff and we get kind of personal and we and and we cuss sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. So Patreon.com <laughs> slash <laughs> like slash Jawin J A W I I N. It's how you help support Geek History Lesson. Show your support and your love to us. Helps keep the Mind University's lights on, and that way we don't uh, punch through reality and punch you in the face. So why not help a podcast out and save your face, your pretty pretty face? Thank you. <laughs> That's the best. I love that. Yep. So after Infinite Crisis, which is about Superboy Prime, <laughs> apparently actually punching through a wall and then getting stuck in a wall, um, nailed it. Vixen actually in Infinite Crisis, Infinite Crisis number seven, to be exact, she adopted a new uniform, and it was very similar to the one used in the cartoon Justice League Unlimited. I like that uniform. It's a good looking uniform. Do you it's like it, even cool. though it's mostly yellow? I do. Um, it kind of reminds me of a, a, a sexier version of that Wolverine, like yellow and brown costume. Mm-hmm. I just think that um, the markings on it and the way that they've designed it, it looks animalistic yet stylized. Like it's better than like a cat, a cheetah suit or something. It's better than a cheetah. Yeah. But I do like it a lot. So then if you don't know, after Intent Crisis, the DC Universe jumped ahead one year. Mm-hmm. All the character stories moved forward. And Vixen was lured to a bar in Hub City. What's Hub? Why is Hub City famous in the DC universe, Ashley? I have no idea. Hub City is the home of the question. Oh, well, that mm-hmm. shows you how much I know about the question. She was lured to a bar in Hub City by a supposed note sent by the question. And when arriving at the bar, she was ambushed by the electrocutioner and Plastique. Ooh, now, Plastique. Plastique is a blow up woman and electrocutioner is a guy, a Batman villain that has electricity out of his hands. There you go. Uh, Plastique quickly grabbed her totem from around her waist and escaped with electrocutioner in a boom tube as Plastique destroyed the bar. Now, Mari managed to pull herself in the wreckage as she began to lose control of her powers due to the totem missing and was unable to channel them properly. No! So basically, she freaked out again. <laughs> well, she doesn't have her powers yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposedly. <gasps> After hours of being free from her powers, and she began to forget all of her memories, including her name. And Vixen soon, though, began to regain control as she remembered the totem specifically and it being stolen from her. And latching on to a human being, she began her pursuit of finding her missing totem. And as she searched, a stinging pain hit her in her back. And she didn't know what was going on because at that exact same moment, Arsenal, Roy Harper or Red Arrow, as he's called, shot an arrow into a mazo in the back. At the exact place where the totem had been implanted inside a mazo by Professor Ivo. Interesting. Because of this arrow shot, Vixen was immediately able to locate where the totem was and use the powers of a falcon to tear through a mazo and grab her totem using her powers without the totem. Ah, so this is where the retcon yeah. comes in. Before the battle, uh, uh, actually, Vixen had been considered by Superman to be a part of the new Justice League of America. However, both Batman and Wonder Woman felt that she was not ready for it. 
Uh, nonetheless, because she helped defeat Amazo, Vixen was invited to be part of the new Justice League of America, now located in the Hall of Justice yeah. in Washington, D.C., along with the other heroes present at Amazo. And that's how Red Arrow got in the league. And this was the start of Brad Meltzer's JLA run, mm-hmm. which uh, is a fun run. It's not great. But it's fun. It's not his. It's not his best comics work. Well, it's the one too where they spend like six issues of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman talking about who can even be in the league. Yeah, it's, it's like them standing around a table for six issues. It's a little weird. I read that when I was in my Roy Harper phase. Mm-hmm. Well, that's <laughs> the best thing about that run actually yes, is absolutely. that is that he finally becomes Red Arrow, and he's one of those legacy characters who I think. Um, he doesn't get shafted for lack of a better word, but like he works really, really hard. To get everything that he has, yeah. he doesn't just inherit. Like you know, he, uh, Ollie doesn't just die, and he gets to be yeah. the only arrow. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, like Roy struggles, man. Yeah. Uh, so Vixen's main story arc in the early issues of Justice League of America Volume Two, which is what this was, uh, centered around a change in her powers. Vixen changed from no longer drawing on animal characteristics, but to drawing on the powers of metahumans around her and humans. That's a really interesting way to expand her power. She would find out that she could match other skill levels, like being amazing at uh, launching a bow, uh, launching an arrow, mm-hmm. not a bow. She could also launch a bow. It was quite amazing with an arrow. With an arrow. Yeah. Wow. And as she suspected, she began draining powers from them, including super speed from Superman and so on. Superman was the first to catch on this, and she eventually revealed it to teammate Red Arrow. Uh, so Vixen sought out her for- former Suicide Squad teammate and lover, Bronze Tiger. And lover. To discuss her situation. And subsequently, after that discussion, she admitted everything to the League. Now, Black Canary, uh, Dinah Lance, was the chairperson of the Justice League of America. And she was mad. Uh, I was like, she was pissed. <laughs> she was really mad. And she instructed Vixen to immediately hand in her JLA card and everything like that. And was like, get out of the building. Yeah. You're removed from the team. Yeah. However... Dinah then uh, apologized and was like, let's talk to Zatanna because maybe Zatanna can do something to Totem and we can fix this. Because it's all magic in the end. Exactly. So Zatanna attempted to find the source of the problem. And when she did, she did a spell. She saw a mystic image of Vixen and Animal Man being used as puppets. <laughs> so Vixen was like, hey. Little sock puppets. Yeah, yeah. So Vixen was like, I got to go talk to Animal Man, who is Buddy Baker, the guy who has this, kind of the same powers as Mari, except he doesn't need a totem. Yeah. Now, Vixen went to sought out, sought out Buddy Baker, Animal Man. Okay. And he also had been afflicted with similar power fluctuations. And he was left unable to tap into the powers of the Earthborn animals. There, they were both sucked into the Tantu totem, where, like in Zatanna's vision, they were a trapped in a Nazi's net like puppets. Mm. A Nazi, the trickster god of Amer- African folklore, the guy who gave this totem to uh, the original ancestor, revealed his powers and, and he said that he had changed Buddy and Mari's personal histories and sources of powers to test them. Uh, yep. Okay. And in an attempt to keep them contained and docile, a Nazi restored their connection to the Red. But because of this, this altered the history of the world and the Justice League, and it prevented the founding of the Justice League completely. So now we're in an alternate reality. Great. So Vixen escaped, and she sought the new Justice Leaguers to fight a Nazi at their side. And although she succeeded in gathering allies and these weirdos who didn't have any idea who she was, uh, (laughs) they were still no match for a Nazi's power. Vixen eventually held the gun to her totem. Even though she knew that if the totem was destroyed, they would all be destroyed, like all of reality would basically collapse. And this forced Anansi to return things to normal. Anansi then revealed to Mari that the whole thing was a test. And he explained that reality had actually been changed on a fundamental level, level, and he needed someone to act as his agent against an individual who could take advantage of the situation. He then restored Mari's powers, restored the reality, and put everything back to normal, and said that one day he would call upon her as, her, as his champion. So he basically godfathered her. He's like, you will do this favor well, for me he, when I come ask. Well, he tricked her. He, he tricked, her. tricked her. Yep. And then in uh, 2007, 2008, I'm not exactly certain on the year. Sure. Finally, Vixen gets her solo series. Some. That had been at NASA since 77. 30 years later? Yeah. 40 years later? Uh, written by G. Willow Wilson. No way. Yep. I didn't know that. And, of uh, of Miss Marvel fame. And art by Kafu. It's actually, the art's pretty great. Wow. It's called Vixen Return of the Lion. And it's a limited series detailing about Vixen's return to her home village for the first time. Now, in this series, Vixen found that a local warlord named Aku Kawisi and his men had taken over several Zambesi villages. 
It turned out that this same man who had... It turned out that this is the same man who killed Vixen's mother years ago. Jerk. And when Vixen confronted him, she found that he has powers that were just like hers. Hmm. These powers actually, though, were found out to be advanced based on advanced technology and chemicals that were given to him by Intergang. Oh, so they're not related to each other. They're not okay. related. Now, the rest of the Justice League went to Africa to render assistance, only to have several members get doused with Kawisi's specialty prepared voodoo zombie potion. This this allowed Intergang to take control of Superman and Black Canary and pit them against the rest of the League. Of course, uh, Vixen rescues the League and saves them all, and it's all good at the end of the day, and it's a fun story, and it's actually a pretty decent miniseries. It's, cool. It's probably Vixen's best story, actually. I was like, you were, you were talking about the the writer and the artist, and I was like, I'm gonna go check that out. It, it's, it, it is on Comixology. It's also on Amazon. We'll get to that later. Sweet. Um, after Final Crisis, of course, we get to Final Crisis at this point. Mm-hmm. Ashley, what's Final Crisis? Um... I don't know what Final Crisis Final is. Crisis is oh, no. where Darkseid invades the world and wins. It's and the, Batman dies. It's the one where he shoots the gun that's not the gun and kills Super, uh, Batman. I almost said Spider-Man. Yeah. Kind of. Darkseid takes over the world and wins. And okay. Batman dies to save the world. I was so prepped for you to ask me yep. about Zero Hour. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, Vixen didn't have much to do in Zero Hour, so I'm sorry. So after Final Crisis, the JLA is a broken team. Batman's lost in time, thought to be dead. Superman's on New Krypton. Just chilling out. Yeah, they all the the the, the, the triumvirate kind of leaves. The, the Trinity is gone. The Just League is is kind of a broken team. And Mari and her remaining team members enlisted the aid of Hardware after Kamiyo Hoshi went missing in her search for the Shadow Thief and Starbreaker, an old JLA foe. Starbreaker is an old JLA foe. With the help of Superman's friend Icon, the team emerged victorious in their battle with Starbreaker. Now this storyline and the reason why I bring it up is because Icon. And hardware are characters of the Milestone universe. Yes. Ashley, what is the Milestone universe? Um, okay. I only know a little tiny bit about the Milestone universe. Uh, the Milestone universe is a bunch of superheroes that are African American mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. or African something. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were absorbed by the DC universe, or were they originally created for the DC universe? I don't know the diff. I don't know. They, they were, were, but that's stat- that's where static comes from. I believe they were. Yes, uh, and I'll go to a full definition. I believe that they were created on their own and then absorbed into DC. I could be uh, wrong on that. They they basically are a spinoff of DC. Yeah. Uh, um. But they're uh, they're gearing up to come back here pretty soon, which is really really exciting. But but most people know Milestone because, uh, like I said, that's where Static came from, and this and eventually the Static Shock cartoon. Yes, uh, well, Static is definitely uh, their most. I would say Icon is maybe their second most popular or well known character. I don't know. I would say Hardware. Well, I knew Icon. Well, let me let me talk let me let me talk about this. And they're they're from Dakota City actually, which is kind of I always like that name. Oh yeah. Um. So. The Milestone uh, universe, it was founded in 1993 by a coalition of African-American artists uh, and writers consisting of Dwayne McDuffie, great writer, Dennis Cohen, Michael Davis, and Derek Dingle. The founders believed that minorities were severely underrepresented in American comics and wished Milestone Media to address this. And this is where Static Shock come from. Is like say, I really like the Milestone characters, and I actually wish that DC would do more with them. And there is a reboot that's coming soon. They will be... Uh, they will be one of the Earths in the DC multiverse, yeah. which I think is great. I think they all have great looks. They do. Um, and there's a really cool crossover in the 90s called Worlds Collide where they cross over the Superman titles, and I love it. Cool. Uh, anyways, and some of them show up in Young Justice. That's true, yeah. Icon and Rocket. Rocket is uh, Icon's... Oh, Ro- uh, I love Rocket. Rocket is Icon's sidekick. Yes. Okay, now back to Vixen. Uh, after this, after this, that, those battles, uh, Vixen broke her leg in a battle with the JLA and the dangerous villain Prometheus. Oh no! And Prometheus uh, did it with Hawkman's mace. He basically just hit her, and her leg broke. Oh gross! Yep. Uh, now, while the rest of the team tried to recover, they were ambushed by Despero, who sought to destroy the weakened league. The weakened league. Now, Despero, of course, is the big finned pink alien guy that has the big eye in his head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, the JLA was eventually uh, the JLA eventually defeated Despero, only to be informed by Zatanna of the horrific event. A Blackest Night taking place across the globe. Mm-hmm. Ashley, what's the Blackest Night? Uh, Blackest Night is where everyone gets turned in. Well, uh, Black Lanterns come, they raise the dead, you get to revisit a lot of uh, dead characters. Mm-hmm. That's basically Black Knight. Yep. Ted Cord dies. Yep. Uh, after the uh, Black Lanterns uh, attacked, 
uh, Vixen told Camillo that she was taking a leave of absence from the Justice League to recover from her injuries. Now, according to writer James Robinson, who was writing Justice League at the time, Vixen was initially intended to have a significantly different exit from the team. Hmm. According to him, issue number 41 of Just League of America was supposed to have Mari returning to Africa in order to help defend the continent in the wake of Freedom Beast's murder in Cry for Justice. Cry for Justice was this big, not-so-good series where mm-hmm. basically Green Arrow becomes a murderer. It's not good. Um, eventually leading her to establish a team of African superheroes known as the Justice League of Africa, which I think would have been awesome. It would have been awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we, that didn't happen because Flashpoint and the New 52 happened. Well, what are those? I'm, this is this is Ashley explains all the DC events day. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, Barry Allen misses his mom. He runs back in time, changes everything, comes back, and it's the New 52, and everybody has a lot more lines on their costume. Yep, and the the the, the whole universe is different, and everything's only happened existed for five years. Yeah, everyone's only been heroing for about five years, and there's already been nine Robins. Yep. In the New 52, Vixen was recruited as part of the new Justice League International, but her tenure with the team was proved short when she was injured in an explosion and rendered comatose. And her friend, <laughs> her friend David uh, Z- Z- Zavimbe, later joined the team in her honor as Batwing. He's the original Batman. Oh, that's cool. Yep. After the Just League International disbanded, uh, Vixen was last seen in the New 52 as one of Cyborg's new recruits for the main Just League roster. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And that's it. That's the last time Vixen was seen in the comics. So she, not much has happened with her in the New 52. Um, just to move over to other media, mm-hmm. one of her biggest arcs we talked about before was on TV in Just League Unlimited, where her and Jon Stewart had a big romance, and she was voiced by Gina Torres of Firefly. I didn't know she was voiced by Gina yeah, Torres. Yeah, she's Gina Torres. Gina Torres. In Firefly days, would have made a bomb fixin'. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, and as we said earlier, too, the CW just had an animated web series origin story that centered on Vixen on their streaming service called The CW Seed. Um, it debuted in the autumn of 2015, and it's set in the same universe as Arrow and Flash. It's a six-part miniseries set in Detroit, Michigan. It's basically her, her origin story of how she gets the necklace and has the Flash power, the, 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 the animal powers. Flash and Arrow show up, and they're just like, you be careful there. And she's like, I'm going to do what I want. And they're like, okay. And yeah, it, all together, it's about a half an hour long. I thought it was fun. It was fun. I thought the animation looked good. If you uh, if you watch them all together, it makes one nice episode of TV. Mm-hmm. And then Mari McCabe uh, Vixen was voiced by, and I'm going to completely butcher her name, Megalyn and Chikuwoke. And let's just call her Megalyn. Uh, and which is interesting. The reason I bring this up is because Megalyn is now reprising that role as Vixen in the live action Arrow season four. You know that wasn't an accident. No, they cast... Like, you know they, they didn't go to Viola Davis. <laughs> no, they cast her for both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, but I think it's so cool. I think it's super cool. And if I were her, I'd be like, I want my animated self action figure and I want my actual <laughs> self action figure. That's funny. Get on it. <laughs> okay. And uh, lastly, in the last little thing, which I think is really cute, um, in Teen Titans Go, the episode called You're Fired, Vixen is one of the heroes auditioning to replace Beast Boy, which I think <gasps> is really funny. That's amazing. <laughs> What's that episode called again? Uh, it's called You're Fired. You're Fired. Okay, yeah. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. <laughs> is the other one, oh man, I hope the other one's like and Animal that, Man. <laughs> and that's the last time that she, yeah, yeah, Animal Man, Wanna Beast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very funny. And that's the and that's it for uh, Vixen and her media, and that's her history. Awesome. Yeah. Let's move on into uh, recommended reading. The recommended reading, as you know, you can find over at Geek History Lesson dot com slash recommended reading we'll have pictures of all these books that we recommend uh, we're going through our back catalog you can click on those pictures take you right to amazon if you buy that book any of these books that we recommend a little bit of that comes back our way keeps the lights on mm-hmm. in the mind university so uh my first recommended reading is uh just league of america volume one by brad Meltzer. Nice. That is where you're going to see Vixen fighting Amazo. You're going to see her in Hub City. It's the start of the storyline where she starts stealing other superhumans, superhumans powers. Mm-hmm. Also, Just League Volume Two, which I think is superior to Volume One. It's the f- this. It's like the first six issues, and then the, like the next six issues. Nice. Um, and that's the one where they do the crossover, the Justice Society America, mm-hmm. and uh, you start seeing like a little love triangle between her, Hot Girl, and Red Arrow. It's interesting. Ooh, sexy. And then Vixen Return to the Lion, which is her only solo series, written by G Willow Wilson. Awesomely great art. And it's a fun read, and that's also available on Amazon. So you can go pick up those books, as I said, geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. Let's hop into the discussion. Okay, let's do it. Where we just discuss things. Yes. (laughs) I thought it would be fun, Ashley, to play a game. Okay. And that game is 
animal villain of the DCU or fake villain? Okay. Okay. So Vixen, of course, has uh, uh, is of course an animal hero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, very animally based. There's a lot of animally heroes, animal villains, animally heroes. Yep. But we're focused on animal villains. Okay. And I'm asking you, is this a real animal villain of the DC Comics universe, or did I make it up? Or something you made up? Yep. Okie dokie. Here we go. You yep. ready? Number one, Copperhead. You made that up. Incorrect. <sighs> that is a Batman villain. He's the guy in Just League Unlimited that has the the orange lizard suit. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> animal villain of the DC Comics universe or fake? Zebra Man. Fake. <laughs> Real. Zebra Man is a Batman villain. That's stupid. <laughs> I mean, I know crazy quilts a thing. Yeah. yeah. Wow, you were zero for two so far. Good I, thing, did, I did really good on the last trivia game. Good thing there's only five. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yeah. The sloth. A real one. Eh. Fake. I made that up. Yes, come on, that's just as stupid as Zebra Man. <laughs> oh, man. I actually figure you'd nail all of these. He just like he needs you to give him a bath and then hang him out to dry in the plastic no, container. he's a fake hero, but uh, copyright Geek History Lesson 2016. <laughs> Look for the graphic novel Kickstarter coming next year. All right. Um, Wild Dog. Fake. And real. Wild Dog. Now, I will say this. Wild Dog's not quite a villain. He's a 1980s DC vigilante who wears a hockey mask, and then he has a uh, jersey that has a dog on it. Oh. Yeah. He's, he's Casey Jones. He's low-rent Punisher. <laughs> yeah. And finally, uh, you're zero for four. Good job. You don't know your animal villains of the DC universe. <laughs> you have to go retake that class at the Mind University. I guess. <laughs> All right. Your last real animal villain of the DC Comics universe or fake tapeworm. DC. Is that real? Yeah, real. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you know what? You know, he, he is real. And I and I have a hope that the reason why you got that right, he's a Robin villain. That's right. Did you actually know who that was? I did. That's the only uh, one who I actually knew who it was. <laughs> well, thanks for playing Animal Man of the DC Universe or, or Animal Villain of the DC Universe or fake. <laughs> animal Man of the DC Universe is all Buddy Baker. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's it for the discussion. It's now the only thing we have left is to move on into our teaching tweet. Where in 140 very concise characters or less, Professor Jason will sum up the entire lesson on Vixen. Vixen should have been the best and first African-American superheroine. Too bad she's not. I think she's animal-tastic. It's like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I, hey, the teaching tweet can be whatever I want it no, to be. No, I know. I'm, she, I'm not knocking it, but I was trying to, I was like, she, oh, that's mean. Oh, that's kind of nice. It's, it's because she's a great character, but I don't think her potential has ever been realized. I agree. Um, although... You know, if she wasn't going to be the first African American superhero, female superhero of the DCU, Bumblebee's pretty rocking. You know, we got a pretty good. Sure. I really like Bumblebee. I mean, I only, I only like Bumblebee and Young Justice, but we're going to talk about that and other stuff. That's it for this geek history lesson. Uh, we're going to talk about that stuff and other stuff in our geek history lesson extra, Ooh. which is our exclusive podcast on patreon.com slash John. We thank you all for listening. Don't forget that you can listen to us every week on iTunes, Stitcher and SoundCloud, mm-hmm. soundcloud.com slash geek history lesson. Go over there, give us a rating and a review because it helps people find us in the search engine and it actually does make a very profound difference in people finding the podcast the number of itunes reviews and i read them i think they make me laugh they're quite they're the, quite the number of interactions is good yes it's really quite great if you want to suggest a future lesson like you could have suggested vixen or you could suggest uh you animal suggest man bumblebee. we haven't done animal man or bumblebee or beast boy uh, or beast boy you can do that where ashley you can do that at geekhistorylesson.com click on the ask button or facebook.com slash geek history lesson and just start typing away yeah there you go or you can suggest future lessons to us on Twitter. Tell us what you think about these lessons. I'm on Twitter at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, and Ashley's on Twitter at Ashley V. Robinson. Thank you guys so much for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on Vixen. I sure enjoyed giving parts of it, and (laughs) I will say the best part, I think, was the animal game. I can't believe you thought the sloth was real. Stop it. And Zebra Man. Get out of here. Zebra Man's fake. Go home. Okay. (laughs) That's it for uh, Geek Catcher Lesson. I'm Jason the Sloth and Man. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson, and Professor Jason, giving your best animal impression, please dismiss the class. Students, 
I want you to look to the sky, see those birds, feel those birds, become those birds, Caca! smell those birds, Caca! and then raise your wings up Caca! and just go. <laughs> Class dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.